from San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMworld and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE TV's live wall-to-wall -wall coverage of VMworld 2015. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com, here with my co-host on the director set this week, Brian Gracely. So, Brian, you've been a guest many times on theCUBE, but yep. you know, now, now you're in, you know, back to back to back sessions, context switching, we're talking cloud, we're talking hyperconvergence, we're talking containers, we're talking, you know, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, what, what's first impressions uh, here from day one at VMworld? So, we came into the week, we weren't sure, there wasn't a lot of sort of pre-noise. Um, people are excited, I, I, people are excited for, in some cases, they're, the ecosystem, they're excited because VMware's talking about hybrid cloud and, and things, they're talking about containers, uh, they're talking about hyper-converged like crazy. Um, that's when the big takeaway for me is, is people are excited that, that VMware is, is validating a lot of these markets that maybe a year ago were sort of buzzy. Yeah, so it, it's interesting. One, one of the critiques we came in is there wasn't, there wasn't an overriding theme. I mean, last year, the kind of, you know, uh, Marvin, Evo Rail was dominating. The year before, I mean, everybody in networking was like, oh my God, that I see our acquisition, NSX is coming to play. Uh, the year before that even, it was, you know, uh, Paul's, you know, stepping down, Pat's coming in. There wasn't an overriding theme at this ready for <coughs> any. Right. Um, it was like, okay, any apps and any workload, I'm not sure, but, but I think you're right. There's, there's a lot of different pieces going on and sometimes we, 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 we miss out uh, that, you know, when we're looking for kind of a big bang. Right, right. Well, you know, when you're looking at it from your perspective, um, today was a little unusual. Pat typically goes first in the keynote. Today was a lot of other things, but hyperconverged, vSAN, uh, the new Evo, what used to be Evo Rack is now Evo STDC. What, what's your take on both, you know, hyperconverged and hyperconverged, and those, what, what's going on with STDC? Yeah, I think it's a great point because I, I, I tell you, uh, VMware's been looking to expand in some areas. We're yep. not just talking about, you know, 100% virtualized and what apps can or I can't do, or, you know, what the competitive landscape is for uh, the hypervisors, so let's let's start with vSAN. Actually, I had a good conversation on Twitter that a lot of people have been hating on vSAN, and yeah. they said, oh, you know, Evo Rails is expensive, and there's lots of solutions that are undifferentiated. I don't know how the community makes money, but first of all, the foundation of that technology is vSAN, and it, the storage group inside VMware has a lot of things they're doing. Um, you know, what's going on with vVols, what's happening with vSAN, and that go-to-market for a converged or hyper-converged solution isn't easy. I mean, Brian, you and I lived through yep. the early days of what was Acadia, then VCE, um, and it took them almost 18 months to kind of get things, right. uh, you know, copacetic with the channel. Um, and even though vSAN might be a software piece, right, how do I bundle it, how do I package it? So we had Evo Rail last year, and vSAN, now 6.0, 6.1 got announced. Uh, what was originally going to be called Evo Rack is now called Evo SDDC, and a big piece of that is what they also call the Evo SDDC Manager. So really how do I pull together all the components of compute, storage, and networking, how things like NSX fit into it, uh, pull it all together, because if I'm really going to make that simplicity, it's not just software, but the management of all of those pieces. And boy, I mean, hyperconvergence was buzzy last year, and we did a bunch of interviews, uh, you know, big guys like, you know, Nutanix are here, of course, uh, SimpliVity, big booth giving away another car. Yep. Um, you know, I talked to, <coughs> you know, Scott Lowe and David Davis, you know, wrote a book actually sponsored by uh, SimpliVity, so, and a bunch of stuff startups, so, right. you know, it, it's only grown and lots of customers trying this stuff out. Right, um, right. So, any, any comments from you on, on the hyperconverged piece? Um, you know, for me it was, um, you know, we're continuing to see startups want to get into this space, which tells me that, um, you know, the VC community still sees there's value in there. Uh, you know, as we talk to them, they've got customers, they're sort of working through the challenges of this. Um, so that part is encouraging, because I know, um, you know, a lot of people had some concerns about if it's an all VMware stack, what do I do? And the fact that there's room for not only VMware and the things they're doing, but all these other uh, companies is, is encouraging. It means that there's, there's big market opportunities, it means there's going to be a big market change. Yeah, absolutely, and you talk about, okay, the VMware stack. What yep. about the hybrid cloud? Uh, the big message was one cloud, any apps, uh, any, way, any device. Um, and we were kind of going back and forth. It's like, well, does it just mean I have VMware here and there? Um, but when you kind of <laughs> unpack the messaging that uh, Carl and Ragu uh, went through is that unified hybrid cloud. So they're not just saying it's only their environment. Uh, you know, 
that there is ties to AWS and Azure, even though they don't want to mention them. Right. It was like, you know, uh, we can't give them validation if I say AWS three times, maybe they'll appear. Right. Um, but, you know, what, what, what's your take on, on that cloud messaging? Well, a couple things. I, to me, when I heard the unified hybrid cloud, what I really heard was them tying together the VMware cloud, you know, on, on both ends, but really making the network piece an important part of it, which is, which is important. We know it's difficult to network them together, all that security and everything. Um, but, but to me, I still think it misses this idea of calling it one cloud. We had Rodney Rogers on, who's CEO of VirtuStream. Rodney sort of said, look, the reality is most customers are going to, they're really managing multiple clouds as, as resources. And, and so I think, I think VMware still sort of, I mean, they're committed to this, it's the same everywhere. I think the reality based on our research is customers are saying, there's a lot of other clouds out there and a lot of them are doing really well. So yeah, if they're not going to mention them by name, trust me, customers are mentioning them to them. Yeah, I mean, the, the recent uh, revenue data that we put out there, if we look at what we expect, the public cloud portion of what AWS sells, and the cloud solutions that Microsoft sells, which includes you know, Office in the SaaS space and Azure, both of those revenues are likely to be bigger uh, than what VMware does in revenue this year. So it's right. big numbers, and boy, the growth rates are, you know, Huge. you're talking 60 to 80% typically, which is yeah. much bigger than the traditional infrastructure guys, dwarfs uh, what, what's happening in the virtualization space. Right. All right, so that we talked about kind of the, some of the infrastructure piece, talked about cloud. Um, Brian, why don't you, there's, there's some DevOps hackathon going on, there's vSphere integrated containers. What about okay, kind of the emerging cloud native and uh, developer focused stuff? Uh, you know, what, what's your take on what VMware's announced and doing this week? Yeah, so I want to get down, they're, they're having a whole track on DevOps, I want to get down and go see some of that. We've been swamped doing shows. Um, Really excited though about all the things that were announced today about uh, VMware integrated containers or vSphere integrated containers, Project Photon, that maturing. Uh, we had Patrick Shazan from, from Docker on here. He was excited about the Docker and VMware partnership. That's an area that, that I'm really excited about because I think what I see is you've got the people that are, that are pure containers and, and a lot of those platforms are cool and we've seen them at DockerCon and other things. Uh, but, but the enterprise wants to know how to do it, and VMware's got such a hold in terms of how to virtualize resources. It's good to see them making a big deal. It's on stage. They're showcasing it. It's open source. So to me, that's one of the real highlights of what's going on. Uh, and I'm excited to see what the marketplace thinks of DevOps Day and Developer Day here at VMworld. Definitely different markets for them. Yeah, absolutely. Even uh, one of the, one of the uh, interviews I did today talking to a practitioner that was doing hyperconverge, he was talking about how it you know, helps him with DevOps. If it yep. simplifies my environment, uh, it can allow me to do some of those, th those changes that I need organizationally and allow me the freedom to uh, you know, change my architecture uh, of my organization to be able to move faster yep. and, and, and to change the way that I'm doing things. Yeah, yeah. What, the other thing that we said when we were coming into this was, you know, the big white elephant in the room is going to be what's going on with VMware and their role in the Federation. I didn't, I mean, you know, obviously they're not going to say anything until what comes out, uh, but a lot of people as we're talking in the hallway going, what will VMworld look like next year? Is it going to still be VMworld? Is it going to be something else? What, do you, did you get a feel from anybody in terms of like how much that concerns them or uh, is that still just... It's just rumors. Yeah, you know, I, you, we wonder how much of it is, you know, those of us in the Twitter sphere and the Clouderati just ba banding back and forth. Um, you, you know, when you talk about some of those, you know, fights or disagreements going on in the industry, a lot of times it, the customers aren't thinking about it. Right. I haven't heard, you know, I, I, I've talked to some companies sometimes when they're going through massive changes. Yeah. You know, when you've been acquired or there's threats of what's going on and you kind of get that fear. I haven't had that buzz yet. I've talked to a number of people that work for VMware and uh, I'm not getting anything behind the scenes because, uh, we know that whatever happens with the Federation, VMware is an important piece of what's going oh, yeah. on. I mean, that's why Absolutely. even uh, there, there's a discussion that says, you know, hey, maybe VMware is, you know, the brand and the leader of what's there because uh, th th that's going forward. What, what, what have you heard so far? Um, I mean, we, you know, we obviously heard from Rodney. You know, Rodney was excited about what his role is going to be in terms of cloud service. To me, what I heard, and, and you just reiterated it, the, the thing that's exciting out of all this is whether you're talking to the hyperconverged guys, you're talking to the cloud guys, it's about software. And, and, and so software becomes that really important thing. So whatever ends up happening with the Federation, whether it's nothing or whatever, I think we're going to see more and more push towards what does software do, what do the software economics look like. And, and quite honestly, if they're going to compete with an Amazon or a Google or Azure, you better figure those out because at those growth rates, uh, they're, they're dealing with pure software. So. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. If you look at uh, the initial partners for the Evo SD 
HDDC, which isn't going to ship until 2016, but uh, it's VCE, which you expect. But right. by the way, the underlying hardware on that, I'm pretty sure that's some kind of ODM type thing. You yep. know, they're not, yep. not sure how much they're sharing, what goes in there. There's Dell. Yep. And the third one is Quanta. I mean, you know, yeah. partnership with Quanta. You know, we talked to Randy Bias, uh, you know, cloud scaling before he was bought with EMC. They were, they were partnering with Quanta. Uh, it's been that discussion of, you know, how the software is going to change the underlying hardware. Um, and, you know, that, that, that's moving. You see, you know, Cumulus has a bigger booth here and is getting more involved uh, on, on the networking side. Uh, definitely some seismic shifts happening uh, on the hardware space. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, a lot of things got announced today. You know, some of them were exciting, some of them incremental, as you would expect. Um, tomorrow's going to be another big day. Pat's going to run the keynote. What are you looking forward to as we think about you know, what we saw today versus what's coming? Um, anything, you know, either trends you saw today or what might be coming tomorrow that you're looking forward to? Yeah, so, you know, it, it, there's always that, uh, you know, there, there's a couple of things here. First of all, you know, what is the average VMware customer thinking? Yeah. You know, how much are they just coming in here to get certified, and where are they with this mindset? So, you know, the last few years we went through the, hey, that Flash sounds interesting, why am I doing it, to, oh my God, of course, I'm using Flash. And a lot of storage here at the show. Yep. Hyperconverged is moving fastly along, I guess if you talk the traditional hype cycle, um, you know, cloud and how customers are thinking about cloud, uh, you, you know, we talk about this community. A lot of the people that did virtualization, they were the early adopters. They were the ones that got involved and they got excited to help make their infrastructure better. And where are those people, you know, are they digging in and saying, you know, uh, you know that DevOps stuff is all crap still uh, and, you know, I'm not going to make change and where are they, you know, moving forward, uh, you know, for, for, for new environments. So yeah. th that's what I'm always kind of excited to see as to, you know, how, how open are we to the change and, you know, what is that, that environment going to look forward go, look like going forward? Yeah. How about yourself? Um, so, so for me, I look at it as there's really four big shows that do infrastructure, right? There's this one, there's DockerCon is growing, uh, OpenStack Summit's growing, and then obviously Amazon or you know, AWS reInvent. Those are the four big infrastructure sort of cloud shows. At the end of the day, VMware is still driving a lot of the momentum, and, they, and they're still part of huge markets and so forth. So, uh, you know, as much as people may have opinions on where they're, where they're at, how fast they're growing, they're still in the center of this stuff, and in some cases, they're driving the train. Um, I'm excited tomorrow, uh, we're going to dive into NSX in a couple of different ways. Uh, we're going to dive in with some of the partners working around OpenStack. Uh, and you know, we're doing a few different things, so we're going to figure out what the fringes of that SDDC look like that aren't just talking about the hypervisor. That part, I think, is going to be pretty exciting to see what, how do you unpack that. Yeah, and, and actually, I've been pretty happy. We've got a double set here. Uh, we're doing things a little bit different. Uh, I get to show off some socks uh, sitting on the director set. Uh, and we've had room for some audience. So in the keynote area, there were a ton of people packed in here. Uh, we definitely welcome people to come. Uh, we're going to have panels on Tuesday and Wednesday, a yep. bunch of them. Uh, so they can come, they can ask questions. As always, you know, hit us up uh, you know, through Twitter or send us notes. Uh, you know, always yeah. it's on the screen here uh, to be able to find what we're doing. Uh, Brian, I'll give you the last word, uh, you know, day one and uh, going forward. Uh, last word, uh, so first off, had a great time today. Glad you guys are allowing me to be part of this thing. It's, it's fun. Um, you, you get to know the community. They want to come talk to us. Um, so good first day, lots of great energy. Um, I think people are excited to hear what Pat's going to talk about tomorrow. And I think the guests we're going to have are, are going to un help unpack that. So that part looks like it's going to be fun and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. All right. As always, uh, find all the research on wikibon.com. Uh, the live videos as well as all the replays show up on siliconangle.tv. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you, Brian Gracely, for being here on this program. Uh, we are a wrap on the director set for day one here, VMworld 2015, and this is theCUBE. Thanks for watching.